Hey, Sank, we are so excited to worship with you guys tonight. Thank you for joining us on Facebook Live. Let's worship together. So 
my future and my home. Your promises never fail. Your promises never fail. Your promises never fail. Your promises never fail. thank you for who you are. We just worship you, God, no matter our situation. We thank you that you hear our hallelujahs in every season. 
who are always there for us, who are always by our side, God. God, we love you so much. We need you, we can't live without you. Amen. What's up, everybody? Welcome to Sank, the Young Adults Ministry of Menlo Church. We've never met before. My name is Adam, and I'm the pastor of this community. I'm so glad that you're with us tonight. I know some of you are watching from Brazil, uh, Toronto, other states across the country, and you may not know this, but here in California, we are going through an insane, insane, like, heat attack. We're setting record temperatures so it's been miserable, but I'm going to be honest, it's not as hot as those drums by Chase Ishii, though. Weren't those hot? Come on. Come on. Uh, man, I'm so glad that we get to worship together in a live fashion. And you may have noticed that we are in a totally different setting than usual. Maybe you're watching us and you're just like, this is not the sank that I'm used to. Uh, that's because we have moved down the road to the 950 uh, Menlo Park campus. Some of you old Sank people uh, used to be here, and now we are back. Now, there's several reasons that we've done this, but one of the main reasons, what it comes down to, is we want to serve you, our community, the best we possibly can. And we want to create an experience that, as much as possible, feels like a live worship service that we can join together and so you can feel like you're here with us. And I've got a really cool opportunity to let you know about. Uh, maybe some of you have been wondering like, uh, how can I actually see some other people from Sank? Uh, there's actually a really cool way you can do this. About 10 to 15 of us put this service on and now that we're in this new room, it's gonna take a lot of work. There's a lot of moving parts, camera shots, uh, graphics, lighting. We need your help. Like literally, to make this happen, we need your help. Uh, run a camera, we'll teach you everything. Run graphics, we'll teach you everything. Lead worship, okay, we can't teach that, but we'll teach you everything else. So if you can help us make Sank happen uh, in the near future, I want you to do this. I want you to email sanctuary at menlo.church, sanctuary at menlo.church. Uh, let us know. You can also email me or Amy or David or text me. However you want to communicate with me, we need your help. Cool? Awesome. All right. Now, before we get into our sermon, we've got a meet and greet question. And just like last week, we're going to give you a chance to win a Starbucks gift card. Okay? So this meet and greet question is specifically geared to how well you know me. How well have you been listening to my sermons the past two years? So this is the question. I want you to respond in the chat. The first one, first person that gets it right. It's a Starbucks gift card, like $200 worth. Just kidding. Okay, so here's the question. What is my favorite movie? Okay, what is my favorite movie of all time? Get in the chat, answer. We'll be right back. Thanks for answering that. Uh, whoever gets it right, we're going to find out here in a little bit. And no, it is not Pretty Woman, whoever wrote that. That is incorrect. Uh, all right, we're going to start a new series tonight. I'm really excited about it. We're calling it Formation. And the way I want to start this series is uh, by giving you a quiz, okay? I want to give you a quiz. I want to see who can get it right. Now, I, I've had many bad jobs in my life. For a season, I was working at the Gap Outlet in Florida, and I was a stalker. Uh, not that kind of stalker, but like a stalker of shelves. And it, I had to be at work at 5 a.m. 
which meant that I had to wake up at 4.20 a.m. every morning. It was a horrible job. I also, for a season of life, uh, got duped into being a telemarketer. So uh, as an introvert, that's like the nightmare. I call people for a living and uh, get yelled at the entire time. It was a horrible job. One of my wor- uh, least favorite jobs, though, was I was a guitar teacher uh, for several years. Now, you'd think that's not a bad job, but the reason I hated it is because people would be so annoying. Like, they wanted to be huge rock stars. They'd see and get inspired, and they wanted to play guitar, but the reality is nobody wanted to put in the work, like, to get good. Uh, and For example, so there was two new students I had at one period. One of them, their name was John, and one we'll call Meredith, okay? Now, John, uh, he had musical experience already. He knew how to sing. He knew charts. And he came in, looked the part. He had bought a brand new guitar with straps, capo, awesome picks. And he came in so confident. He, like, was almost already there. He started telling his friends, like, I'm a guitar player now. And then Meredith was almost the exact opposite. She was super timid. She didn't have any musical experience. She didn't even own a guitar. She had to borrow one from a friend. And she was uh, scared to tell anybody that she was taking guitar lessons because she was just nervous that she wouldn't be able to do it. Now, uh, fast forward two, three months. John was starting to get super frustrated because here's the deal. I would tell every student that these 30-minute Uh, lessons are not going to be what makes you a guitar player. It's going to be the practice you put in, right? Like the times you skip video games and you work on your strumming patterns, the times where you work so hard at uh, like your fingering positions that you get calluses on your fingers. If you play guitar, you know exactly what I'm talking about. And so I tell him this, and what I notice about John is he was so excited to play guitar for an open mic night. He wanted to learn songs And every time he would come back, week after week, we'd have to go over the same lesson again because he hadn't practiced. He hadn't learned anything. He was at the exact same pace that he started. Now, Meredith was different. She would come in every week, and she was just nervous, afraid to play for me. She was timid. But every week, she had done the work. And so we could go on to a new lesson, a new concept. And every week, she'd get better and better. And so at the end of three months, here's your quiz. Here's your quiz. At the end of three months, John uh, still was stuck on like two chords, and Meredith uh, could play like several songs. So here's the quiz. Who, at the end of three months, who was the real guitar player? Who's the real guitar player? It's a trick question. <laughs> Jesus told us not to judge, so we can't judge, okay? Uh, No, uh, I'm talking about Meredith, right? Obviously, I'm talking about Meredith. Uh, She was the one who actually became a guitar player over time. Now, John looked the part. Like, he had uh, all the look right. He even called himself guitar player, but it was the person who put in the practice and the work and the time that became the guitarist. Now, why are we doing this series called Formation? Here's the deal. Many people, maybe this is you, maybe not, but many people, especially in America, want to claim Christianity as an identity. But most people don't want to follow Jesus as a master or a rabbi. I'll say that again. Many people want to claim Christianity as identity or a label, but most people don't want to actually follow Jesus and do what he says. There's this huge gap that I've seen over and over again where it's so easy to uh, want the results of what following Jesus is. You want to be like Jesus, or you want to be a Christian, or maybe you made a decision where you were young. Um, You want to call yourself that. But so many of us don't put in the actual practice and the work to become like him. And you've heard me say this before. I'm going to keep saying it as long as I'm the pastor here. Jesus never called anyone to become a Christian or to join a church or to join a religion. Jesus called people to follow him. Come like me, walk with me, become like me. So we're starting this series because honestly, guys, 
if I have one desire as your sank pastor, as the shepherd of this community, is that we would be a community of young adults that don't simply come to a worship service or watch a service online. We sing some songs, hear me tell some dad jokes, and then go to the goose afterwards. I want us to be a community of people that is practicing what Jesus taught us and that we are transforming. We're becoming like Jesus. And so question for you as we start, if someone knew you three years ago and knew your character, knew who you were, and they saw you uh, today, would they say that you're becoming someone different? Would they say that you are a more patient person, a more joyful person, a kinder, more gentle person? Or would they look at you and your life and the way you live and just say, that, per- that person's exactly the same as they used to be? Because Jesus wants us to evolve and grow and change. Now, there's tons of uh, stories in the Bible about life change, of course, but perhaps the biggest example is someone uh, named Apostle Paul. Now, those of us who grew up in church, you you will know this story, but uh, for those of you who haven't, uh, Paul was originally called Saul, and he was like this uh, huge, massive success in the Jewish world, and he was so zealous uh, for his Jewish faith that he would persecute Christians. When the Jesus followers came along, he would persecute them. He was trying to uh, make this, uh, this faith like not exist anymore. And then in a random occurrence, Saul meets Jesus on a road. And over time, Saul transforms his complete person, who he was. They started calling him the Apostle Paul, and he eventually writes the majority of the New Testament. And so tonight, I want to look at five quick things that he said. Usually, I'll take one scripture, and we'll sort of tease it out, but I want to look at five quick scriptures because I believe Paul had uh, one major goal to give us in following Jesus, and we can see it clearly here, okay? So let's look at these scriptures together real quick. Uh, The first thing uh, the Apostle Paul says in Galatians, uh, he says this in Galatians 4.19, and to be so always, he's talking to his friends, the Galatians, not just when I'm with you, my dear children, for whom whom I am again in the pains of childbirth. And then he says this phrase, until Christ is formed in you. The first time he says that, formed in you, Christ being formed in us. Let's go to the next scripture, Colossians. So here, Apostle Paul is writing to this group, uh, and he says, "To, to them, God has chosen to make known among the Gentiles the glorious riches of this mystery. And again, he says this, which is Christ in you. This is the hope of glory. What's the hope of glory? Christ in you, being formed in you. And again, uh, Romans, we see this. Uh, For those God foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to what? To the likeness of the Son. So we're supposed to be conformed into the likeness of the Son. Two more. In Corinthians, he says this, and we who reflect the Lord's glory are being transformed into his likeness. And then final one from Romans 12, classic uh, verse here. Do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. So in all these scriptures, again and again, Paul talks about this concept, transformation. Christ being formed in us, formation. And the Greek root word of all these words is a word called morpho, morpho, which of course, this is where we eventually get our word metamorphosis, transformation, right? And Paul is telling us uh, that there is one main goal of this Christian faith. You know, especially in America, when someone says like, what is Christianity all about? We can think of tons of things. It's often associated with things like politics and uh, morality and so many different things it's been associated with. But when it comes down to what is this Jesus thing all about, it comes down to this core thing, to know Christ, to know him so well, we are formed into his likeness. Jesus doesn't want us to just take up a label. 
wants us to grow, to adapt, to evolve, to change. The goal is to know Christ and be transformed into his life. Now, on my way here uh, tonight, you know, because it's so hot, a lot of times, uh, I, I grew up in Oklahoma, super hot, we would eat watermelon in our backyard. Watermelon is a perfect summer fruit. And, you know, often we really miss out, we have a disadvantage on what actually takes place with fruits and vegetables and our and the food we eat, because we can go to the grocery store, like I did, and we can get this final product, right? We can get this uh, surprisingly heavy watermelon and juicy, and I'm going to eat it tomorrow with my, my family. And there ends up being a disconnect, okay? So we can get this fruit, vegetable from the grocery store, and the disconnect is we forget and we miss the process that took place to make this product, these results happen. We miss all the work that went into it. Like when I buy something like this watermelon, I just get it from the store. I door dash something. I don't think about like, where did this actually come from, right? It came from somewhere. Someone grew it. Someone worked, made it happen. Someone watered it. And someone eventually uh, drove it on a truck or whatever happens. I don't know. Uh, but we are disconnected from the actual process to every product, to every result, to every end uh, game. There is a process that goes into it. And here's the deal. If you want, like me, if you want a flourishing, full, abundant life that Jesus talks about, if you want that as your end result, then you got to understand that there's a process that goes into it. If you want a full, peaceful, joyful life that Jesus pro promised, you have to engage in the process. It's a spiritual formation process. And that's why we're doing this series. And so before we close uh, today, I want to give you two quick ways to engage in this process, the spiritual formation, two ways to do this. Now, when the pandemic started, uh, my wife and I decided to get into gardening to try this. So we, we saw things like these watermelons. And we were like, man, we want to make that happen. We want to be a part of the process. And so uh, what you uh, don't realize when you're like me is you're sort of naive to the investment and the time and the energy it actually takes to make something like this happen. You know, it started uh, like all fruits and vegetables uh, start. I had to go to the store and it actually started. I don't know if you can see this with the cameras right here, but it's a tiny seed. You probably can't. Uh, it's like the size of a watermelon seed that eventually gets here. And what did it take for me as a gardener? What did it take? It took tons of time and investment. So I'd have to get a seed like this. And then in my backyard, I had to create a space for it to grow. I had to build a raised garden bed. And then next, I had to get soil, right? Because uh, seeds need like a live soil to grow and be nourished. And after I got this soil and raised garden bed, then I needed water, like maybe the most important part of the process. I have to consistently water it, right? I can't just water it like once a month. And then after that, you need some sort of nutrients. Uh, you can go the chemical route, fertilizer. Uh, you do weird things like I did, like put uh, like cracked uh, egg shells into the soil that's supposed to help, give them nutrients. And then once they start growing, you got to prune them a little bit. And finally, for me, I had to protect uh, my garden from rats because California rats are crazy and they're stealing all of our fruits and vegetables. Now, here's the, th here's the point. Here's the first thing we have to do. If we want this full life of Jesus, if we want to commit to the spiritual formation process, here's what we need. Consistent cultivation. Consistent cultivation. Uh, cultivation is all about preparing and taking care of the soil. And you need to consistently do this. If I would have uh, only watered like once every two months, uh, that would have killed the plants. I have to consistently take care of this, uh, of the seed. I have to consistently nourish it. And here's the deal, when it comes to our spiritual souls, our spiritual lives, 
we have to consistently cultivate our hearts and our souls. Um, many times we fall into this, uh, this thing where we go to a church service once a week or we read scripture once every couple of months or we go to a retreat and we hope that that will be enough to grow our hearts and grow our souls, that it will cultivate us enough, but it has to be consistent. So as we talk about formation in the next few weeks, that's what we got to challenge ourselves to, consistent cultivation. And then the next step is what I would call surrendering the results. Surrendering the results. Here's the deal. When it comes to my garden with fruits and vegetables, uh, I can cultivate the soil. I can water, I can feed, but I don't have the power to grow a seed, right? I don't have the power to miraculously turn a seed into uh, a fruit, right? I don't have that power. I have to surrender the results. And that's one of the most fun parts of gardening, if you've ever done it before, is one night you'll go to sleep, and the next morning you wake up, and you'll see like a little flower. And then the next morning, that flower will turn into uh, what's the beginning of some kind of fruit. And so we have to surrender the results to God. He's got the power to do that. When it comes to our results of our spiritual lives, so often we want to focus on those. When we see others who are more self-controlled than us or kinder, uh, more patient, uh, we'll get frustrated if we focus on the results. Why am I not there yet? Why can't I do that? Instead of trusting in God to like, make the results happen. Our job is to cultivate and daily practice, put in the effort and the work, but then we have to trust that God is moving, that God is transforming us from the inside out. And so how I, how I want to end tonight is I want to read you off a list of the, the fruits of the Spirit. Now, these are talked about in Galatians 5, if you want to go back later. And the fruits of the Spirit, there's this concept of exactly what we're talking about. For those of us who follow Jesus, become like him, uh, he will transform in us these characteristics that the Bible calls fruits. That the Holy Spirit will move within us and will make these uh, fruits of the Spirit grow. And so what I want to do is invite you. I know it's weird because you might be at your computer or wherever you are. <clears throat> I want to invite you to close your eyes right now. And I'm going to read through these fruits of the Spirit. And I want you to reflect and spend time with God. And I want you to think about, out of all these fruits of the Spirit, what is one of them that God wants to form within you in this next season? Sure, there, there's tons of them that I, like we could all use growth in. But I want you to choose one. As we reflect, and I'm going to pray, I want you to pray with God and ask Him, to transform you, to form his fruit of the Spirit in you. So I'm going to read through these. I invite you to close your eyes if you're comfortable wherever you are. Uh, so the first one is love. Do you need to grow in love? Maybe you love the people that love you, your friends, but do you love your enemy? Maybe that's one for you. And the next one is joy. Maybe uh, you are constantly down and cynical. Maybe this pandemic or job loss or circumstances uh, have left you just dry. Your soul is like a desert. You need God to form within you a deep-seated joy. Uh, maybe it's peace. Maybe uh, you need to become a person of shalom constantly anxious, constantly worried, constantly stressed, chaotic. Maybe that's one for you. Maybe it's uh, patience. Maybe when you're in the grocery line and the old lady in front of you pulls out a checkbook, you get super angry and annoyed, guilty. Maybe it's patience. The next one's kindness. Would the people around you say that you are known for being a kind person? That's a fruit of the Spirit. Maybe it's goodness in every area of your life, being known for pointing people to the goodness of God. Maybe it's faithfulness. Man, this is a huge one. 
uh, having faith in the midst of chaos and craziness and darkness. Maybe that's one you need grown in you. Maybe it's gentleness. This is not a super popular one in our country. A gentle in the way you speak to others, in the way that you uh, have conflict. Gentle in the way you treat those who have less or the vulnerable. And finally, uh, maybe it's self-control. Maybe when it comes to food or alcohol or sex, you just are always succumbing to your desires or pleasures. Maybe it's self-control. So I'm going to pray right now. And I want you to just spend this moment with God. Ask him, what, what are you trying to form within me in this season? And then you surrender to him. You commit to that consistent cultivation, that consistent effort and work, but you surrender the results that God, I trust that you can transform this in me. Let's pray together. God, we thank you for giving us this moment to remember why you're even calling us, why we are even here. And then when you tell us to follow you, that you actually want us to do it. You actually want us to take steps and to practice what you've taught and to put disciplines into place. So Father, would you show us how we can do this in our everyday lives, how to take solitude, how to meditate, how to read scripture. And God, we'd ask that you would transform us. As each one of us thinks about a, a fruit of the Spirit that we just know that we're lacking in, uh, God, would you not give us guilt or shame or any kind of weird uh, motivation, God, but would you just give us a desire to be like your son, Jesus? We want you to form that in us. Make us like you. So, Father, we surrender these things to you. We ask that you would continue to speak to us as we continue to worship. It's in Jesus' name we all pray. Amen. You say to
I'm so glad that we ended by seeing that phrase. Let us become more aware of your presence uh, because every moment, every moment is a chance to grow. Every moment is a chance to be formed into the likeness of Jesus. Uh, I love someone in the chat, Alicia uh, said something about, man, this uh, is pruning season for all of us in the middle of COVID. And she's so right, right? 
Like this moment, every moment, including this moment that seems so hard and so desperate and so monotonous, this moment, God wants to change us and mold us and form us and grow us into a full and flourishing uh, human in his likeness. So don't miss this moment. Don't miss this opportunity for God to mold you, to change you, to grow you, to teach you. Uh, and be formed into his likeness. Next week, we're going to be talking specifically about the practice of solitude and how that can be part of the cultivation that helps us be formed into God's likeness. I'm so grateful that you uh, worshiped with us tonight online. And as I mentioned earlier, we're going to be doing this every week and it takes a lot of work. And so we would uh, ask you, challenge you to be a part of making it happen. Don't just stay in your room and watch it on your headphones. Come here and see it in person. It's way better and a little more stressful, just saying. <laughs> uh, but we want you to be a part. So email us at sanctuary at menlo.church. Be a part of making this happen, all right? Now, finally, to the big results of the really important question, what is my favorite movie? We had two winners. The movie is Shawshank Redemption. That's right. Super unoriginal, but I love it. Uh, so the two winners, Sam Littlefield was like a millisecond before the other person, but Sam is on staff, and rumor is that she's super rich, so she doesn't need a Starbucks gift card. It's actually Daniel Sayer. Daniel, my man. You actually listen to my sermons. Thank you, bro. We'll be sending you a Starbucks gift card. So uh, uh, yeah, yeah, bless, bless yourself, man. All right, uh, final thing. We are in the middle of what we've been calling the Sank Proverbs Challenge, where every day of the month, we are trying to read together a chapter of Proverbs. So we're on September 6th, which means we're in chapter 6. Maybe like someone else I heard earlier, just up there, I'm saying, uh, you have not read any of these chapters so far? That's okay. Just jump in tomorrow at chapter 7. And uh, each day, uh, David, myself, or Amy, or someone in our community on Instagram will post a little a uh, little learning from the chapter of the day. So that is a, also part of our formation in the middle of this. All right. Well, my friends, we love you. We miss you. Thank you so much for joining us. Grace and peace. We'll see you next week. <laughs>